let's have a go. Let's just let's hey, think positive, Brack. I never let's think go. positive. Probably a true story, but that's the Netherlands for you. Why a suicide right. rate in the world? No, or that's Finland. Oh yeah, but it should be the Netherlands. No, it should. <laughs> down to the abyssal lair of the radiophonic sea creatures slap some mustard ketchup and fried onions on a chihuahua because i tokyo choo choo i'm gonna be your host today and uh with me as always the two men who actually took their dogs along when invited by their mothers to go dogging it's human metal and brack how are you guys how are you human metal i'm fine i'm very happy that i don't know what dogging is and i won't google that uh but uh choo choo uh, i assume you watched wrestlemania I did watch WrestleMania. You know, I think something has changed in the Matrix. I'm getting deja vu here. But yes, I did Impossible. watch uh, WrestleMania as a, as a huge wrestling fan. Of course, as always, it was completely overshadowed. Well, not completely, actually. But it was overshadowed by the NXT event the day before. Mm. Um, Andrade Cien Almos and uh, Alistair Black ripped it up there. Just oh, yeah. Fantastic. Massive, massive props to them. Um, yeah, it was it was a great show. Uh I was entertained throughout uh, most of the duration. I think the first half was stronger than the second half. Uh, a yeah. few things disappointed. Uh, Nakamura and AJ Styles was not as good as it it could have been or should have been. I think it really didn't live up to the hype. It had a spectacular ending, though, but it, it didn't quite live up to its billing. Um, but yeah, overall, it was a, it was a really uh, solid WrestleMania. There was a lot of fun to be had. What were your overall impressions of uh, of that event? Overall, yeah, I was pretty happy with it. Uh, I like that The Undertaker didn't embarrass himself again when he appeared. Uh, yeah, he probably has a new hip this time around. So yeah, that, that's actually the truth, Greg. How did you know? Uh, <laughs> no, uh, but uh, overall it was a, uh, was a very entertaining show for most of its runtime, which I didn't expect considering the previous WrestleMania. And yeah, so what, what, what uh, was your favorite match from the evening? Well, actually, my favorite match was uh, was... A match which I was convinced was going to be an absolute fucking train wreck mm -hmm. going into the show, which was the Ronda Rousey. Oh, yeah. Uh, same for me. <laughs> yeah. Kurt Angle, Triple H, Stephanie McMahon. I thought that had absolutely no value. I thought that was going to be a tea break. I thought it was going to be the, the lowest fucking point. It turned out to be the most exciting thing on the card. Strangely, <laughs> had me jumping out my seat and jumping all over the place. Just classic good versus bad storytelling. And everybody really like like put a lot of effort in that. I love, yeah. I absolutely love the spot where Triple H and Ronda Rousey uh, came together in the middle of the ring, and and like Triple H was saying to the referee, like just just back off, like this little girl thinks she can take me, just just step out the way and yeah. let me, you know, get this little princess or whatever. And then she beat the shit out of Triple H. I love that. <laughs> that was absolutely amazing. <laughs> yeah, was well, great. She yeah, uh, just... she did really she did a really good job. Yeah, she did. She she's definitely got some some skills in the WWE ring, and I think uh, all of them, you know, as as a performance, athletic performance, I think it was you know decent. But as a storytelling performance, it was wonderful. It was yeah. you know all that it had all that kind of theatricality that you know you love in pro wrestling. Um, so build. it was just a ton of fun. Yeah, good build up. Didn't you know? Like we said, we didn't really expect anything from this, and you know got. Good stuff out of it, so yay. <laughs> also, the opening uh, Intercontinental Championship match with The Miz and Finn Balor and Seth Rollins was great. <laughs> Loved The Miz. Yeah. So sad he lost his Intercontinental Championship. <clears throat> You're the only also, one. No, I, I don't think so. The Miz has a <laughs> lot of fans these days, definitely. Um, he does? Also, he Where did does, they yeah. hide that evening? <laughs> <laughs> what no i don't think that's true at all. i think loads of people love the miss he's become something of an internet darling now these days he's oh, completely maybe. like what 360 no wait that's not right like, it's probably a maybe it's people probably are mistaking him for the movie the whiz and that's why I like him. <laughs> <laughs> also uh, one, one i don't last, know one, one last thing about wrestlemania though that really irked me and had me like like swearing i'll never watch wrestlemania again 
they didn't give Rusev the United States Championship on Rusev Day. What the yeah. fuck? Yeah, that oh, was man. really shitty. And that a friend of mine I was watching with hates, hates Jinder Mahal with a passion. Boy, <laughs> was he happy when, when you know, when he got the fucking title. We were all wrote, uh, uh, rooting for Rusev because he has, you know, really turned around, got a cool uh, gimmick now and everything. And it's fun to watch and everything. And yeah, he should have been the one. Definitely. Yeah. It looked it. For, it's also they made it look just for a few seconds that he was gonna take it and then yeah. Jinder Mahal fucked him and he's like no nah! oh my god yeah. a, that's what pro wrestling is all about that those moments when you want to throw something at the TV it's amazing but if, you know I would have been okay with everyone but Jinder Mahal and Randy Orton <laughs> and of course it was, but, uh, whatever you know yeah I would have still an entertaining uh, match though I, I I would have picked Jinder over over Orton, frankly. I'm I'm so sick of Orton. So I'm never... sick of both of them. Yeah, one so can't they... wrestle, and the other one doesn't want to wrestle. I don't yeah. know what's worse. Well, the the other one wrestles when he can be half assed. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. So that that's WrestleMania for you. So good show in general, Human Meta. Yeah. Definitely. All right. Yeah, good stuff. Well, let's let's uh, move on from WrestleMania now because I think Brack actually literally goes to sleep every time we talk about wrestling <laughs> on this and show. And who can blame him? So, no, you can't. You can't blame him. I, I mean, uh, if someone wants to talk to me about like figure skating, Olympic figure skating, I'm like nap time. I think so. you're pretty really safe here in that environment, though. Uh, Olympic figure skating actually makes for an Oscar-winning movie. And, oh yeah, no, the, that's also, true. I haven't that, seen that Tonya yet. So it is wrestling. Yeah, That's true, true too. The, Shit. the wrestler is really good. Right. Yeah. So yeah, you're right. They were on the same level. Wrestling and <laughs> Olympic figure skating. Yep. Oh no, no actually no, 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 no. The wrestler is nominated. But the, uh, the, 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 the figure skating movie actually won a few Oscars. So, <laughs> also, so figure it? skating is better than wrestling confirmed. All right. Hang yes. on a minute. Mm -hmm. that, that, that movie, The Cutting Edge as well from the 90s. That was great. With DB Sweeney and whatever the fuck her name was. <laughs> like, I'm anyway. guessing it didn't win any Oscars, though. No, it was still good, though. So, anyway, continue on, uh, Brack. Uh, what's on your list for the Shadows this, this week? Talking uh, about being put to sleep, I went to see Tomb Raider. Mm -hmm. Ooh. You know how it's sometimes when, when you're like, uh, make, they make an adaptation from like a book or something. You're like, oh man, why did they put this one, this in it? What's in the book? In general, they take stuff out. Not with Tomb Raider. They put a whole lot of stuff in there. Useless stuff. <laughs> like in, in, the, the the movie, like the, the part that the game where the game actually starts, it happens like 30 minutes in. It has like a 30 minute long first act where you see her like delivery driving on a bicycle and like going oh, to great. UFC, doing UFC fights and like being dramatic about like about her dad and stuff like that and it's like mm -hmm. they introduce like 20 characters that none of those come back like none of them wow and it's, it's it's completely what a sequel <laughs> uh, and it, it's, it's it's completely useless and then the movie starts and it finally starts like 30 minutes in they finally get to the island and it's just kind of boring and bland like it, even both even Bob is targets is is like 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 boring in this. That's kind of hard to imagine. But yeah, but like, but you got you could you shouldn't complain, Brax. You got two for one. You got like the Tomb Raider movie, but you also got like the Paperboy movie in there for free. <laughs> yes. Paper go, <girl>, please. <laughs> uh, well, that's the same to here. I mean, I I wonder if it's better if you haven't actually played the uh, the first Tomb Raider reboot game. No, no, because... I don't think so because the the po po like. Recognition is like the only emotion I felt. The entire movie. <laughs> I I think that's that's kind of a theme, uh, considering another yeah, movie like, that you want to talk about later. The, 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 the sort of acts from the game. Oh, this is the shot that looks straight out of the game. Oh, this looks yeah. straight from the game. And those are actually the best the best parts as well. Okay. But they're not really all that great. So that's yeah. yeah, that's a shame. I I really liked Alicia uh, Vikander's performance in Ex Machina, so I was hoping that you know she She's would not get. A... Yeah, She's... I was hoping she would actually get a good movie to work with, <laughs> but. Mm. <laughs> You know, well, also there's this one thing I have when I, when I see a movie that's shitty and you see the actor is like completely ripped and it's like, oh my god, you can just feel that this, these people have worked out yeah. for like 40 hours uh, a week for like months straight and they're like, oh, and you did it for this movie. I feel bad for you. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? 
Uh, yeah. It's like it's the worst. She's like super ripped in this. It's the worst I felt since like uh, what's that guy uh, uh, from the Frankenstein movie? Shit, uh, uh, Aaron Eckhart. When he like <laughs> worked his ass off for being like a mediocre Frankenstein movie that raised a completely like a ripped Frankenstein. And it's like, oh my God, like you ate like uh, uh, eggs, you ate like chicken and broccoli and nothing else for like for, like six months straight. <laughs> and, and all you got for this is this movie. And like, oh, that's, I'm sorry. Well, that's, that's I, well, yeah, on one hand, yes. But realistically, I mean, if you're shredded, you're shredded. You know what I'm you know what I'm talking about. It's being sometimes being shredded is his own reward. No, but they 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 lose that shit like after like weeks. You know, it's, it's... Oh. yeah. At least that's what, that's what that that, that the uh, Alicia Vikander is told in one of those interviews where she's like, "Oh yeah, I was shredded," and then, like four weeks later, it's like gone. It's like, oh, I feel sorry. Yeah, if for you him. don't keep the training up, I mean, and why would you if you don't you know do it for anything or have other stuff to do where you don't need that you know being shredded for. I mean, you get yeah. only so much time on your hand. Just, yeah, it's pretty tell... bad. She's she's okay in it. Walter Goggins isn't that great in it, but also not that bad. And in mm. general, it's just pretty forgettable. And it also has like this movie has so many flashbacks to stuff that happens earlier in the movie. It's like if you take a shot every time that they, they they do a flashback to something that happens like less than ten minutes earlier, you might die. <laughs> <laughs> just in case you forgot. <laughs> There's little. This, this is hilarious. There's like like a prologue, right, mm. with a voiceover, and like uh, from uh, one of the actors uh, 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 who plays her dad. And like 20 minutes into the, like not even 20, 50 minutes into the movie, they repeat that entire voiceover again. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's the point of that voiceover? If you're gonna repeat it, what's the point of a prologue if you're gonna use the same exact like like voiceover again like later on? Martha. And that's the and, and like at the end of the movie. There's like a flashback to something that happens less than a minute earlier. It's like, what? <laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> well, they, uh, they, they really don't have much confidence in, short -term, uh, in the short-term memory of their viewers, do they? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and the funny thing was, uh, I, I watched like a double feature. I went to Tomb Raider, and after that I, I got a snack, and I went to the next movie, which was Game Night. Uh, what? Game Night. Uh, I'm sure you guys have seen it. It's like a comedy movie with Jason Bateman, Bateman, no. Rachel McAdams, and I no. was like, it's like a, it's a really funny comedy movie. And I was surprised that like the, the cinematography and the fight sequence in that movie look better than anything in Tomb Raider. It's like, oh, this is this is bad. It's like one of those R-rated like kind of like one of the mill comedy movies that it has better like action sequences and cinematography than like this big triple A like big ass like like blockbuster movie. But mm. yeah, I can I can recommend that movie. It's a really funny. Uh, it's a really funny movie. All right. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, I, I also have uh, been especially Jesse Jesse Plemons in that movie. It's hilarious. Like uh, I'm not sure if you know who the actor is. He he uh, he's also known as Matt Damon. Even if you sh if you, oh, put, if, you no. if you put in Matt da Matt Damon in uh, IMDb, you actually get him as an actor. And he shows up. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Yeah, I I remember I remember Meth Damon. Yeah, obviously from from what he's most famous for. But okay, yeah, he's he's got good comedic comedic talent. He was great in that one episode of Black Mirror. Yeah, and he's great in Fargo as well. But he's he's really yeah. funny in uh, in this. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, uh, I I also have been uh, watching movies, Brack. So uh, the first movie is also a comedy on my list, a straight up comedy, which is Thor Ragnarok. Which I finally saw. So I think of the three of us, I'm the biggest Thor fan. And yeah, that was great. I laughed my ass off through that entire film and 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 loved it very much. Um, I thought some of the action beats were also uh, really fun as well. And um, so I just, you two were of divided opinion on that. Brack really liked it. I thought it was were great. We? Human metal. I don't remember yes. that. When did that happen? Oh we yeah. About it was there an episode about that? <laughs> <laughs> and human metal um wasn't wasn't overly keen on it yes unfortunately the radiophonic secret is audio have been deprived of that because we did the reason we've been away for so long is actually we did lose an episode in the interim but let's not talk about that it's a sore subject uh so only for you <laughs> definitely for me um but uh 
Human Metal was basically complaining that some of the minor characters in the Thor universe just get like off and stuff without without any emotional payoff or whatever. Um, mm. Me as the biggest Thor fan, I can officially say that like, yes, Ooh. Human Metal is right that you know they 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 did get off without much fanfare, but who gives a shit? I mean, okay. my my I reaction that. as the biggest Thor fan was like you know my the only character I cared about was um uh ray stevenson and the only reason yeah, i cared sack. about him the only reason i cared about him was because he was ray stevenson okay that, <laughs> it wasn't the character it was just like oh no ray stevenson is out of the marvel universe like that was the only reason i really cared about that like the other you know like as a character i can give a shit about him um uh, right. but but um that was not lady... my only complaint though but let's not yeah. overextend this yeah lady sif is not even there i think yeah and lady that's, sif that's is not true. even there so but, she uh, probably suffice. He's probably thanks, like obligation. Thanks for giving me more reasons to complain. <laughs> but um, but uh, however, emotionally speaking, I disagree. There, there was some emotion there to be had. Uh, I think Odin's goodbye to his sons and stuff was great. I think the, there were some nice sort of more emotional beats with Loki. I mean, it wasn't as emotional as, as it has been previous, but there were some emotional beats there. Uh, yeah, also Scourge as well, who was hilarious in the movie. <laughs> yes, I love this character as well. Scourge, you I mean? No, Scourge. The the uh, no, yeah, he was great too. The the rock guy was awesome, but Scourge, the Carl Urban's character, uh huh, was hilarious in that film. Um, he he was great, and he, his sort of like turnaround was kind of, I guess, kind of in an emotional vein as well. Yeah, no, but, I, I think that's one of the things I was disappointed by. Because I really like that actor, and I think he was not used that much or not enough. He's like a yeah, very small little performance. I wish they had saved. I wish they kept him alive for the next movie and whatever, because he was such a funny character. I like I liked his character. I thought it was absolutely hilarious. I think everything that came out of his mouth was pretty much gold. Yeah. And uh, but yeah, the the comedy MVP was of course that rock monster. Who uh, I thought was played by Charlotte Copley, but Brack uh, corrected me and told me it was actually the director of the movie. Which is, so he did a great performance. That rock monster who just stayed calm, just you know, just like deadpan, no matter what was going on. <laughs> it's just he, everything he said made me laugh in some way or another. It's like, yeah, so just just really fun, funny, uh, funny film, and I enjoyed it very much. I would uh-huh. I would put it. If I was to rank the Marvel movies, I think I would probably put that in third or fourth place. Yeah, I put it really high. There's also some hilarious cameos in there. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure if you, you noticed those. But especially Matt Damon yeah. is hilarious. Matt Damon, yeah. Matt Damon was amazing in that. Yeah. <laughs> that was hilarious. That made me laugh. <laughs> Sam Neill as well. Yeah. And then what's actually kind of... And like one of those Hemsworth brothers who's not... Uh, 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 Thor, who plays who plays Thor in that play? That's pretty funny. Yeah, it's absolutely absolutely amazing. You got like uh, Matt Damon as Loki, you got uh, Sam Neill as uh, Odin, and you got like the, whoever whoever Brack was talking about, who I don't really know to be honest, is uh, as <laughs> Thor. So it was it's yeah. There's there's some fun cameos in there. Um, so I'm going to talk about another movie very briefly, uh, which was another comic book movie, which wasn't funny. No. Actually, that's not true. It was occasionally funny. Uh, Justice League, mm-hmm. uh, a film which which I don't think we talked about on on this show before. I'm not sure. We I mean, yeah, might have we talked have... about it, but I think uh, I forgot about that entire movie. Yeah, well, I I and I can certainly appreciate that because uh, apart from apart from the moments where it was actually a little funny, uh, especially regarding the Flash. Um, yeah, that movie sucked. I mean, it, it, was, it, was, it was pretty bad. And not only that, but like, it was such a fucking ripoff of Avengers 1 and 2. Like, it took pieces of both those films and like, ran them together. It was just, ah. And not the good pieces. Yeah, oh, yeah, it was, it was, it wasn't good. I mean, it was better than Batman versus Superman, but then. That's you know, not uh, a tough task. Yeah. Like a, a case of venereal disease is probably better than the Batman yeah. versus Superman. So like, <laughs> like Superman. Yeah, was... Now that would be an interesting Superman. Batman fighting a grandma. 
I, I'd love to see Batman fight Super Nan. Like, do you know oh, Super Nanny? That's the one, Super Nanny. Do you know Super Nanny, the uh, the English TV show? You know, don't know Super Nanny, where like this, like woman goes to people's houses and helps them deal with unruly kids. Oh, I'd right, love to yeah. See Batman fight fight her. <laughs> sure, I mean, that's that's gonna uh, be the sequel. Uh, also, Batman. did you did you notice the parts where they they CGI uh, uh, Henry Cavill's face because he was wear, he was wearing a mustache? Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Did you no, notice? I didn't that? see it. Oh my god, I didn't see it. Really uh, how did you not notice scene. that? It was in oh. every th scene. <laughs> not every scene, but it's like, it was very noticeable for me at least. It was like, yeah. oh my god, what's wrong with your face? Like something Yeah, his upper face. lip is, looks so weird, and every time he smiles, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> but, Oh but my god. Now he has at least a cool mustache in that new Mission Impossible movie, so I think it's, yeah. it's worth it. It's totally worth it, because Justice League wouldn't have been good anyway. Yeah. So. With or without mustache, so yeah, yeah, that 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 that, uh, that was a total it's, blowout. It totally sucks. Also, worst worst villain in comic book villain in a while in movies. Like, yeah, why? What the, they were preparing everything to be fuck to for the for the villain of this thing to be dark side, and then it's just one of his generals who looks like an ass and is full he CG looks and like lame. Like 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 a character you fight in like God of War and not even like God of War yeah. the main series and like God of War the PSP yeah. game. It's like a yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> God of Sparta villain. I just that did you, you, you see you're laughing about it and it is funny in a, in a complete you know the, their kind of sense of ineptitude. But 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 at the same time the guy's a fucking humanoid. He's a human who's wearing armor and like a hat. You know, like yeah. a helmet. Why the fuck could he not be played by Syrian Hands, the guy who, the actor who actually plays him? You know, like Mance Raider from Game of Thrones. I mean, Why can't Syrian they just Hands have him pretty... with a headdress? Old. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, it would have been, it would look so much better if they actually had an actor, because his face is like humanoid, right? Why do yeah. they have that like lifeless fucking like CG face? It's like just they like, thought they just... could pull it off and could make him bigger that way, and yeah, it's, it didn't mm. work. Holy like, shit, they thought they could pull him off and make him bigger. Fuck Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work. Uh, also, um, it didn't. Yeah, also, also the, the, those weird setups for, you know, the the, the, the movies, especially the, the, um, the standalone Aquaman movie, like, you get introduced to the character, and then, that you know, he gets to Atlantis, and Stepwolf steals that fucking artifact thing, that mother box, and then... Suddenly, you know, instead of talking about what just happened, like, hey, there was this fucking big guy stealing one of our artifacts that we've watched over for generations, they start talking about his fucking mom and everything, and as someone who is not invested into this, that franchise, you have no idea what the fuck he's talking about and what is going on. It's like, what are they talking about? Why are they not talking about the shit that just happened? But you know that, just... movie, that movie was like, it was like three hours at first. Yeah. You no, know, that's kind of like that movie is probably cut back from like three hours to like, what was it like two hours, maybe even a little less than that. Yeah, yep. it's so, but it's so weird. It's like you, ah, the way they set up these characters and it just doesn't work. Like the the idea of not giving them their standalone movies f uh, first and then introducing them. I mean, you can do that with Black Panther, and you know, has with X shown that X Men has done it. You know, yeah. Black Panther. Did you say Black Panther? What do you do? Do you shit his cacks? Yeah, exactly. No, he's, you know, that is shown if you know what you're doing, you can do it. But they had no idea. They were like, okay, we're going to have these characters with complicated backgrounds and we're <laughs> going to try to all set them yeah. up in this fucking movie and then spin and them also, off what's, from what's that. Funny, it's not like, working. Uh, 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 they spend way more time with like the backstory of like Batman and Superman and any of the other characters. But you know yeah. what? Everybody and his mother knows the backstory for Batman. Exactly. <laughs> like, like this. Who's this Flash dude? Like nobody knows anything about this Flash dude, right? Like Flash more so than Aquaman, but Jesus Christ. Yeah. I, uh, I think uh, I think Alfred, uh, played by Jeremy Irons, is probably you know the only decent thing about the film. To be honest, oh, yeah. uh, and the, the Flash was pretty good too, actually. Though he was all right. But uh, yeah, Ezra Miller was fun. Um, he, I think he summed up the entire like Justice League movie and mm. just how Batman is portrayed right now with one quote saying, "Hey." You know, I, I miss the times when all we had to worry about was wind up penguins. I think. Mm. Yeah, that, that was that's, great. 
that, that was a nice pretty, callback. <laughs> it was, and that's pretty much. But that's that's basically the microcosm for the entire film. Is like, yes, I do miss Batman Returns. Once yeah, you miss. me <laughs> like, too. Real bad. <laughs> okay. Back when we so, had good Batman movies. Oh well. So human metal games let's move on to the video game oh, yeah. section of the show so please tell us what have you been playing uh, uh, of recent times let's make this quick and dirty because i think we're already running pretty long on the shadows at this point um i've been playing uh way too much monster hunter world um although not as much as other people in my fucking uh you know friends list uh, some being like basically 100 levels higher than me <laughs> like i'm like how is this possible <laughs> anyway um yeah, it's a fun game. It's also very frustrating. I've never played a Monster Hunter game before, I have to say that. And, uh, yeah, it's, you know, you're going out there hunting monsters, basically. It's just only boss fights, the game. And you got a lot of weapons to choose from and try it out. I went with the gun lance first, which is like this combination of a lance and a gun, obviously. That was, that was fun, more on the defensive side. And now I'm trying out the fucking long sword, which is apparently is the... Uh, most popular weapon. I'm I'm going mainstream, everybody. I'm selling out. Anyway, yeah, it's it's uh, it's fun. It's fun. Um, I had to take a break because it was getting frustrating at some point because I didn't know what I was doing and uh, didn't get the materials I wanted. But otherwise, uh, it's it's an ent entertaining online game. More fun with friends, obviously. Uh, and the monsters are cool and everything. But it can get a bit repetitive. And if you don't like the combat. In general, just, uh, you know, how it plays, which I think is what Breck, uh, you know, came away from when, when he played the, uh, or came away with when he played the demo. Uh, we both played the demo together. I mean, it's better in the final game because the demo had like this weird, they made this weird decision for, for, for the, yeah, it was a beta, all right. Um, this is weird decision for the beta to like limit each mission to 15 minutes, which is minutes, which is totally dumb if you don't know what you're doing. And you got 50 minutes in the final game for most of the missions, which uh, takes a lot of the frustration out of this. So I'm, I'm glad for that. But if you don't like the, you know, the nature of the combat and how it plays, uh, you can immediately go and not play it anymore because that's what this game is. It's just you against a giant ass monster, sometimes two. Uh, that's yeah, it can be annoying too. But if if you like that stuff, yeah, sure, give it a try. It's fun. I don't know if you've uh, Chuchu, if you've played any of the Monster Hunter games. I I haven't. Oh, I played like f literally five minutes of Monster Hunter X, but uh, that okay. that counts. But um, basically speaking, as I, as I'll get into when I talk about games, I just don't have time for that type of investment in a game. Me neither. These days. That's a that's a problem. And after a while, I was like, mm. man, I need to play something I can finish because. <laughs> Because this just, you know, I cannot play this game enough to get any great headway and it feels like I'm not doing anything. So yeah. <laughs> I played a small game. I played uh, the first um, uh, Gun Vault game, which is like the small jump and run game and that came out on Switch and, uh, and, and the second part and I played that. And yeah, that gave me a bit of gaming satisfaction, I guess, because I could actually finish that game. But yeah, it's Monster Hunter World is a giant game. It's, it's designed that way. It's supposed to go on forever, like an MMO. So yeah, yeah. I can be aware appreciate of that. that. Yeah, uh, that's the problem with a lot of games that there. A lot of games are like designed like, oh man, this is going to be your one game for the next. Yeah, time. games as a service, yeah. and uh, you know that would work if they were the only games available. But <laughs> I'm like, no, I don't want. To. I want to play this for like ten hours or yeah. something, and, and then and I want to be know, done with be it. Be done with it. You know, you yeah. know what? Like, um, the, the, recently, do you know uh, PlayStation Access? The, the, the YouTube channel, yeah, Plus. no, 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 Ta PlayStation Access. There's the YouTube channel called PlayStation Access. Um, mm -hmm. They're actually they're actually officially uh, affiliated with PlayStation, so they get like mm -hmm. inside scoops on stuff. So pretty worth checking out. Plus, they're headed by a quite uh, a, a, not a notable, but a, like a minor comedian in England. He's actually pretty funny. Mm -hmm. I forgot his name. His name's like Rob something. But anyway, the, recently they made like the top ten list of PlayStation games that can can be completed. In under in five hours or under, Ooh, like nice. a, a, a straight sit down, play in one session, finish the game. I found that list incredibly helpful and just want to play everything on it. So I recommend if you if you got, you know, time troubles or whatever, you're looking for short video games, go check that list out because there's a lot of good games on there. That sounds good. I'm gonna do that. Yeah, uh, yeah, you, uh, should. you should. Talking about a game that's that's kind of 
uh, uh, supposed to be a games and service, but it ended up being way shorter than expected. Uh, be a good to replay through Destiny 2. And you know what's mm-hmm. funny about Destiny 2? We played through the campaign of Destiny 2. Uh, the only reason we noticed we were close to the end is because the music started to get real epic. It was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are we close to the end? Yeah, and I like think throughout I've... the final mission, me and Chuchu were like, I was like, talk, 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 like, I think this is going to be the end. I think we're close to the end. It's like, no way. Definitely not was... close to the end. <laughs> yeah. we're we're like halfway through or something. Maybe it's like the beginning of like the third act or something like that. <laughs> And yeah, like, bracken- throughout the game, throughout the, like the the, the 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 mission, he's like, wait, 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 maybe you are playing close to the end. Maybe you are. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was like in disbelief. We were like playing this mission, and Bracken was like, oh, I think this is the end of the game. And I was like, no, it can't be. No, don't be stupid. No, this can't be the end. No, it's not. Was. Don't be stupid. Wait, uh, <laughs> wait. Oh, I think you might be right, Bracken. <laughs> Jesus, we played that game for what five minutes? Jesus Christ. I think it's wow. like well, eight to ten hours that you play it off. I think that's something like that. Maybe a little bit less. Maybe eight, less. I think eight hours. I think eight hours. I think, I think like five. No, no. I think five. I think it's I think it's eight. I think we played it for around eight hours. But it included some side stuff as well. It's not even not just the campaign. The campaign is less than eight hours. But uh, uh, I was really disappointed in this campaign actually because the first Destiny, yeah. let's be honest, the story is even worse. The story in this one is. Terrible, but in the first one it was even worse. It was like practically non-existent, right? But at least the gameplay was uh, kind of challenging, and you died a lot, and you actually like the spaces were a little bit more open and a little bit more vertical, uh, and so it like the gameplay was a be- way better, way more fun. And this one, like the, the the gameplay was was kind of boring actually. It was too easy, and and, and just like there was no, uh, it was too repetitive. Like the first one actually had like. A little bit more like diversity in their in their in their mission structure, or at least like more. And the, the, it, it just the, it was more challenging as well, and especially most notable was with the the final boss, who was yeah. like throughout the cutscenes like I'm gonna be your god with this yeah. power. I'm gonna be your god, right? Like yeah, like, yeah they did that multiple times. I mean, he didn't even break a sweat when he kicked his ass. <laughs> Nope, he's like, I am a god, I will destroy this universe. And then two guys turn up with a machine gun and a couple of grenades and just wipe him from the face of the earth. Like he's not even there. It's like, hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, so I I would I would agree with Brack completely. Uh, but I'll go I'll go stronger and just say Destiny 2 just sucked. It really, really it was it was bad. Um, is it worse so, than the first one? Or yes, yes, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. It is because the first okay, uh, the first the second one has a better storyline. Definitely it has cut scenes that make sense, and you kind of you kind you kind of know what you're doing. Although I spent most of my time saying to Brack, I don't know what's going on, Brack. <laughs> like I, that's literally true. But um, the second one, so the second one has a, a, a I guess a better story. But the first one had much, much more exciting gameplay, much more exciting setups, much harder strikes, like areas that you died, had to respawn, come back, bosses that you had to work tactically around, that, you know, you had to take up different positions to fight against, uh, mm. bosses that, you know, they shot a laser at you or something, and if you got caught by that laser, you were immediately dead. So you had to work out this tactic where, you know, like, I'm going to distract the boss here, get his attention. Then when he comes for me, you know, you guys go in the back, whatever, and get, get you know, attacking from the back yeah, from like, a quick spot. In the, in the first Destiny, we had, like, moments where we had, like, cheese our way through there, through the game, yeah. by, like, one person hiding. And then when everybody else died, he just ruined, like just so they can wait till the, the guys respond because otherwise yeah. all, all of us would die and we wouldn't be able to go through here. And in this one, I felt like like uh, I want to say John Wick, but, yeah, but John not, Wick. As, not, not as exciting. You just run up to yeah. people and just shoot them from from like close range. At that. That's exactly it. Brack and I would would often the the, the go to thing with when we were playing that game was just like, oh yes, yeah, he's just John Wick in it. Like I'm just John Wick in it. <laughs> just like 
just going through these swarms of enemy, not breaking a sweat. I'm telling you, the only time I died in that game was when I fucked up and made a missed time jump myself and fell into a meat grinder or something. Like, mm. that was the literally the only times I died in that game. And I'm not even good at first-person shooters, as Brack will attest. Like, the mm. game, it just it wasn't exciting in the slightest. It didn't get my blood up. It was just something I was playing, basically, just to chat shit about the game with Brack. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's so disappointing because... Like, the basics are there. The mechanics are great. Like, the yeah, controls of beautiful. the game feel good. The shooting feels really good. Like, this is a, these are the guys who've done, like, the Halo series. So they know yeah. how to make, like, good shooter mechanics. But then then, then, then everything else, the, the level design, the enemy design, like, the enemy AI, all that stuff is just disappointing. And, like, the difficulty is way too low. And you can't, you can't change the difficulty, at least not as I know, at least throughout the campaign. It's like an MMO. So the, the difficulty is, like, set, like, universally. So uh, it's impossible to change the difficulty. It's way too easy. And it's like, it's yeah, no fun. It is. That's exa exactly what Brax says. I'm a fan of easy games. I don't like to be frustrated when I play video games. But even me, my main complaint when we were playing a game was like, this is not fun because it's just, you know, the original Destiny, we actually, you actually had to think. You know, there was some urgency, you know, when you had to get the fuck out of Dodge and jump up to another level or whatever. And there was a kind of like a thumping kind of like pace to it. You know, you had to you had to actually move around, get cover, get your shield back up. You could just literally stand in the open and just blast things indiscriminately in Destiny 2. There was just no fun to it. There was no challenge. It was just it just sucked. In fact, so much so that after I finished the campaign with Brack, I deleted it from my hard drive. And was yeah, just me like, too. Yeah, I'm I'm done yeah. with that. Yeah. Like and uh, I, in fact, I I, did, I think literally today I told my wife you can sell this at the <laughs> at the game store if you want. <laughs> like, uh, you but, should. Yeah. So that's still kind of worth worth something. You yeah, know, to sell it as that. fast as possible. I, I think I think that might be the case. In fact, this weekend I'm probably going to do that. So I, I guess I'm going to move on to to infinitely better video games than Destiny 2. The first one up would be Yakuza Zero, which I finished. Uh, that was awesome. It was fucking fantastic. Uh, start to finish, just the best Yakuza game ever made by far. Great pacing in the story. Really exciting. Uh, the side missions were addictive as fuck in that. Like, I just wanted to spend more time in the world. And interestingly, it's the first ever Yakuza game that wrapped up. And I still felt like I wanted to spend more time in there. Or I was sad to finish it. Like the, the 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 main story wrapped up. I was like, no, I haven't finished this, this, and this in the in the in the story subquests. It, it was just brilliant. I loved it. Um, I wanna I wanna put it on record that somehow in the game of the year episode that we made, there was a miscommunication between Human Metal and I, and Sonic Mania ended up as my game of the year for various reasons, which I can't be go which I can't be bothered to go in here. But actually, as I was saying to the other members on the podcast, my actual game of the year was Yakuza Zero. Uh, even back then, and that's that's tripled, like quadrupled my feeling on that now. So I just want to just r retroactively like put that in its place. Yakuza Zero was my game of the year last year, definitely without question. Now I've finished it. It's it's a masterpiece. It's really and it's the tipping point for me. It's the the point that has taken that franchise from a game series that I liked, that I always liked, but there was always something holding it back from being great. Always something about the game. You know, like like its pacing issues or its antiquated mechanics, etc. There's always something that that's that kept it out of my favorite games list. However, Yakuza Zero is that tipping point. It's the it's the masterpiece of that gaming uh, uh, franchise. It's it's absolutely perfect. And now that series like transcends into my favorite game series, one of my favorite game series of all time. It's it's absolutely fucking amazing, Yakuza Zero. If you haven't played it. Go play it. If you didn't like the other Yakuza games, give it another chance because it's on a whole different level. It's fucking fantastic. One day. Ooh. Yeah, what well, Yakuza Zero Human Metal is definitely the right game to start because it, it literally starts you at the beginning of the story. There is nothing before that. So there yeah. you go. All so right. are you looking forward to uh, Yakuza 6? Uh, yes, but I, I, I enjoyed Yakuza Zero so much that actually I bought Yakuza Kiwami. Oh, no, okay. The, the remake of the, the first one. And I've started to play that. However, I, I thought, like, I'm so into Yakuza now, I can just jump into it. But, however, I am feeling like I do need to take a break from the Yakuza after starting. <laughs> it's like, it's like I played, like, 
five hours you've, of Kiwami or something, it's like, yeah, I do need to play something else now. Um, don't get me wrong, Kiwami's a great game. I like it. But it's, uh, it, I, just, I just need a break from that type of game. So that leads me on to my next game, which, which, which I started to play. So I got lost for a little bit, thinking, what the fuck should I play? Like, I need a break from Yakuza. I'll come back to that later. I need something different. Then PlayStation Plus gave me Mad Max. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, so uh, I had heard sort of, you know, things on the grapevine, good things about Mad Max. I heard it wasn't perfect, but, you know, many people enjoyed it. So I decided I'll give it a try. God damn. That's a real good case of right game at the right time. Mad Max is awesome for me. <laughs> like, I can I understand I, why I can understand why some people, you know, that wouldn't be the right game for them. But for me right now in my life like it's perfect because i don't have much time to play like really in depth like long style games and ironically mad max is obviously a very long game but you can play mad max in like 30 minute spats mm. and like put the controller down and not worry about it because it's it's basically an it's a huge open world game uh but the open world is very empty and the narrative is very threadbare um yeah it doesn't you know and and the story mission. i mean it was th th there was some of the stuff that people were actually criticizing but you know depending how you approach it that you know can yeah. actually be an advantage that's it it works for me like mm -hmm. and the, like the story missions themselves are like only like you know like 10 15 minutes long or something maximum so i can easily burn off uh like a couple story missions raid a couple camps or whatever do some of the open world stuff so it, the open world nature of that game actually is kind of what I need right now. But the thing that makes that game great, the thing that makes it transcendent, which I believe also other people have said, you know, is the world is so fucking beautiful. It's so yeah. beautiful. It just pulls you in. It's like, it's almost like Red Dead Redemption style. There's this kind of like this lonely, isolated feeling of just you and your car. And your car, yeah, in, in, in the desert, in the tundra, you know, beautiful sunsets, whatever, you're alone on a lonely mountain or whatever, you know, looking out over the scenery. There's this kind of like sad feeling that permeates that world. Like, it's, it's hard to explain really unless you actually play it, but it, it feels lonely and it's really relaxing to play because the gameplay is the opposite to Destiny. It's like, it's easy, but it's easy in a really relaxing, kind of cathartic way. You know, like, like a gang rolls up on you, whatever, you just destroy them. You, you have a race with them or whatever, smash their cars, the smithereens, get out, beat, beat the shit out of a couple people. Like, you know, ice them like they're nothing. Uh, go, go, you know, by yourself when all the action is finished, just quietly go into the camp, raid it for scrap and stuff, get more water, whatever. It's just, it's, it's excellent and somehow the atmosphere just pulls me back and just find myself wanting to play that game more and more and more it's just it's really good it's really fun yeah i, li I liked it too uh, i played it all the way through and i enjoyed it even though you know i usually don't appreciate that simple open world style game kind but uh i don't know that for me apparently came to at the right time and i was like man this is this is a really good looking game, and I enjoyed like building my own car and you know upgrading it and everything. I wish it would like control a bit more arcadey, because it it feels uh, I don't know it it feels too too heavy too simulationy, like the, which which doesn't really fit the tone of the game, and it sometimes does like gets like stuck on fucking. Um, on, on debris or uh, makes like weird jumps and turnovers because of some stone that's on the ground because you know the physics clash and everything that 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 you know annoyed me sometimes but aside from that yeah it's a fun game it's it's not not like super special or it doesn't really have an elaborate story or anything but it's just good atmosphere good i don't know world setting world building and everything so yeah it's it's definitely a decent open world contender cool uh, yeah. I, for me, it did come at the right time when I played it first. Maybe this time I, I will get back into it. But uh, the first time, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm kind of tired of this open world design, of this UB open world where it's like filled with stuff to collect and just it's for small upgrades. And I was like, yeah, yeah, not for me. I'm not feeling this. And I, I quit pretty early on. 
Oh wow, well, yeah, I, I'm I'm loving it. I, I I love the world design. I just it's like I say, it's got the Red Dead thing for me. It's just got that loneliness of the open plain, <laughs> nothing but you and your car. Like just ah, oh, I'm loving it. Um, and with that, we're going to move out of the shallows and into the depths. <laughs> Welcome back to the depths. So today on the depths, we're going to be talking about a very, a very grave, serious subject, and I, I think we should all take a moment to reflect on just how serious the the subject that we're going to talk about is. We we need some we need some music. We need some choral effects here, or something like that. Um, but basically, I I believe I'll start this this segment with a with a proverb. Old Mother Hubbard went to the cupboard to fetch a poor dog a bone. When she got there, Rover took over and gave her a bone of his own. Mm. I think that says everything you need to know about the coming. Yeah, uh, we are talking about abortion people. All right. Well, human, human metal was obviously a twisted fuck. We're talking about dogs. <laughs> <laughs> But he just, I went for comedy. He just took it, he just took it to a really dark place there, people. <laughs> I mean, I can imagine why human metal, the, the word abortion and dogs would be in the same situation for human metal. Because let's face it, we all know human metal likes to fuck dogs. But uh... See, I provide you with the best material. <laughs> uh, Brack! With the best setups. Yeah, no, hang on. The I best should, I should material, that. but the worst links. Yeah, it's the worst links. <laughs> the link of sausages made from dogs, hot dogs. Um, uh, don't so, open a, 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 a URL that uh, URL that that uh, urine metal sends you. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, definitely. If, if human metal sends you any kind of link with any kind of canine hints in it, please don't open it because you will see something. I want to let it be known that Bragg picked the topic for this uh, recording. I did not choose this because I'm not that not, not knowledgeable to know that this is the year of the dog in the Chinese Zodiac. So, Yes, it's, yeah. it's as Human Metal said, it's the year of the dog so we are going to talk about dogs in media. Our favorite dog things in media. Oh, let's get down to it. Brack... <laughs> Let's go doggy style, bitch. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> what? He, he has to recover from that first. <laughs> uh, nice. I'm guessing you're not talking about the Snoop Dogg album. <laughs> uh, come on. Come on, Brack. Stop panting. But uh, yeah, let's go into. <laughs> He's literally <laughs> lost. He's just lost. Yeah, like, well, how the hell do I uh, do, do I like start going from that? Uh, yeah, the first one on my list uh, is uh, I Am Legend. Uh, I'm guessing you guys have seen that movie, and especially the first like half of that movie. Especially the first half of the movie, it's just Will Smith surviving in this dystopian future with just him and his dog, and actually can feel. That connection between him, the, that character is not like his last companion, uh, last living companion that he has, and uh, uh, it's a very like emotional bond that the that the, the character has, and it yeah, shows on the screen. Yes, it, it's, it's kind of like when Human Metal sees a dog, you know, his 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 dick just starts twitching. Do you know like that movie Swiss Army Man? See, here's the reason why I didn't want to pick that topic myself because I knew this would happen. Yeah, and I was like, I was hoping, I was hoping that like you, that you would, that, that you would at least be creative enough to keep it to one and then jump over to some some other jokes. But no, who have like, you been recording with for the you know, past? If you, if you were metal, wouldn't stop jumping over to other dogs. I'd be fine. Anyway, continue. He's got a beat. Uh, he's got a bitch. Horse. What? He's, he's got a beat and that that dead horse. You know. Yeah. And not Aww. the dead horse. It's a dead dog, probably. There's still. nothing left of that horse. He's like turned it into jelly at this point, but he's still punching it. I don't know. It's animal cruelty. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. It well, is. he loves that. I wouldn't want to be Choo Choo's cat. That that poor cat has a has a bad life. Wouldn't like to be your dog, human metal. Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> this is dark. Old you are though. <laughs> Practice go no anyway. fast. Save us. <laughs> Bitches leave. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, which is a Robocop uh, reference in case you didn't know that of course uh, oh, of course I let's go back that, right? to I Am Legend yeah uh, I haven't seen I haven't seen that movie I wonder if, if Will Smith was I, able to to sell that connection to, to I, his what was it actually. German Shepherd yeah 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 he yeah, does actually he it, actually yeah. I've read the book uh, which it's based on and the movie by the way completely misses the point of the book like it just goes right yeah. past it. Like it has no like, and the entire entire title doesn't make any sense anymore because they changed a lot of things for the movie. So uh, that's kind of a disappointment. But in the book, the, the, there's also dark in the in the book, but it, it only for like a small part, and you don't really feel that connection between the the, mm-hmm. the main character and the dog. You do like you do in the movie. That's like one of the few things that the movie improves upon, uh, and especially like in the first half. You actually feel like, oh yeah, this this dog is his only friend, his only like companion that he has that's, that's left in this world, and yeah. it's, it's just like uh, the, the the that connection you can see it on the screen. It actually works really well, and obviously some bad shit happened to the happened to the dog. Obviously, but and and when it happens, it's very sad. It's like it's one of the the, the, the saddest moments of those type of moments you have I've seen in in movies. Yeah. Uh, well, I can't say it's can't good say to hear, it, but yeah. I guess it. Yeah, it's at least it seems like uh, Will Smith managed to to sell that connection, so that's uh, that's cool. I haven't seen the movie yet. Uh, I don't know if I want to. <laughs> I mean, it's not supposed to be an otherwise good movie, right? Mm. It's like, okay. Yeah, I, it's okay. I don't. I don't think it's terrible. I think it's uh, it's so so at best. To be honest, I don't really remember so much about the movie that, but. The things I do remember about the movie, unfortunately, it's not a dog. No, I do remember there was a dog in it. I remember like three things from that movie. I remember the Batman versus Superman logo that's in Times Square. <laughs> like, and I remember really bad CG, like white face zombie things that looked like oh, yeah, ripoffs right. of the movie The Descent. And I also remember for some reason, and this is really weird really weird please don't judge me badly from this but like no chance there was this scene where like the, like the zombie things were banging into this window and one of his mouths one of their zombie mouths like opened like really spectacularly wide like really 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 weirdly wide and i just remember thinking man they'd be so good at cock sucking you know what you know what i'm not thinking worse of you my opinion of you has not changed a little bit from this, <laughs> <laughs> this information. it has been exactly the same <laughs> yeah, not surprised at all. Just yeah. you know, sticking to, sticking to your guns. H- however, um, I would say about the movie, um, I believe that most of the DVDs come with like the alternative ending. I believe the alternative ending is is much better than the ending that was in the theatrical cut. If yes, it's, it's memory close serves to, correct. It's closer to the book, but it still it still misses the point mostly. It still mostly misses. Yeah. The was point. there was there like yeah. You, you know, brack, he, brack, he brack! You, you, you're killing us here. What was the original point of the book? The original point of the book is that uh, uh, everybody has actually. Uh, do you want me to spoil it? I can spoil it. Yeah, okay. sure. Spoil it. Sure. It's a real, It's a pretty good book, and it's only like four hours long. So I can still recommend you guys to read or read it or listen to the audio book. Like, like, like basically three pages for Human Metal. Then continue. What? Okay. He's slow at reading human metal. He's, he's obviously slow at thinking. Too. Oh, okay. All right, but um, that was so dumb. Sorry, there I didn't are no get the zombies point. in the book. There are vampires, and they're like the, the in the ending he gets captured, and it happened. The twist is that he that, that the entire movie he is the monster from the other creatures' perspective, uh, and like ah. they, they are like they are like a new species of of of, of uh, intelligence, and they're like sort of vampire type, type creatures. And they have like a complete society built on, and he is that monster to that society. He is the, the legend, the boogeyman to those people. Cool. Didn't they do something with that in the original ending for the, or you know, the ending they didn't choose for the theatrical version? Sort of, but uh, they tried to do a little bit like that, that he figures out. But you never feel that because there's still like zombie creatures, CGI zombie creatures that they don't have a voice, you know. So you, you don't really see that. It's close. So how do, uh, they definitely, the fuck, book... 
they definitely fucked up there because that that sounds way more awesome than yeah. what the movie was. It sounds like it sounds like the book at the end is pulling like what what the newest Doom ge- uh, game did, where it shows you like log entries from the demon's perspective, and the Doom Marine is suddenly like this apoc- apocalyptic creature that is like like completely destroying their civilization. Yeah, but it's so. still here we actually like oh he's the he's the bad guy almost. You, that's what you see in the ending of that of the yeah. uh, of the book, and it's a real good twist, and it's a real good book. And I can recommend it still. And it's uh, cool. real short. Wasn't there? There was an old version of uh, a movie of that with Charlton Heston, right? Yeah, uh, the Omega Man, I think. It's maybe a thing. Yeah, yeah, the Omega yeah. Man from like the seventies. Like the book is real old. It's like from the fifties or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the Omega Man. I wonder Man. if the old movie is closer to the source material. Maybe. Okay. I guess I gotta check both of those out. All right. So I guess I'll move on to to my first pick. So. The first pick for me is going to be a movie that I absolutely loved when I was a kid. Um, it's a it was a go to kids movie from from when I was growing up, and that is going to be Beethoven, mm-hmm. the original Beethoven. They're actually like I believe there are like five Beethoven movies actually, or something like something stupid like that. But I've only seen the first two. But and I, I can't remember anything about the second one, so let's just concentrate on the first one, which is is generally considered a i think a kid's masterpiece these days so it really? stars charles grodin well i think so beethoven's awesome if you grew up in the 90s brag beethoven if I've you were seen, a kid in i've the seen 90s, the movie beethoven as a kid awesome. yeah i've seen the movie as a kid it's on, uh, you, you know how, how i remember this movie mostly all right it's one on, of those movies that uh bus drivers always have when you have like a when you <laughs> <trip>. <laughs> yeah <laughs> that always put on his beethoven that and <laughs> running man weirdly enough Weird. Uh, that and uh, Free Willy. That's like those two movies. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's those two movies that, that that bus drivers always have me then for some reason. <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay, sure. But that doesn't change the fact that it's just a great film as well. Um, Charles Grodin, uh, I guess, is the main star of the film, who's a father of a, an uptight father of a family who likes everything neat and organized, and then a puppy comes into his life. And his children love the puppy. He doesn't. He doesn't want a dog, but you know he can't. He can't take that dog away from his children. And then it grows into a. So he lets them keep it, and then it grows into a huge dog and fucks up his house, fucks up his life, etc. Causes him all kinds of like you know slapstick grief, which is great. Um, meanwhile, there's this other thing with this uh, uh, bad guy, this evil vet dude who's a complete asshole who in the movie yeah. let's be honest you want to see him take a fall right because he's a he's a despicable fucker who wants to try out like high velocity gun rounds on dogs basically and he needs he needs a really big and sturdy specimen yeah. for that so of he course need... he sets his eye on beethoven yeah exactly like, like, so... like just buy a dog or like i don't know buy something that's closer to like a, a human skin like a pig it's easier like way easier what? Well, he's yeah, but he's 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 an asshole, right? He loves killing, yeah. so and probably he likes to kill things with the soul. So dogs, why not? Pigs don't have souls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ooh. but uh, um, that's that's why your mother's a demon, Brack. So anyway, <laughs> oh my god, that's so harsh. I'm sorry, Brack. I apologize for that one. It's awful. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, so he got the, you know, and he even he pretends like the dog bites him and stuff, so he can get the dog put down. Like he gets an extermination order for the dog for because the dog bites him or whatever. And he's just such a despicable dick. So it's such a pleasure at the end of the film. Spoiler alert for Beethoven, but you haven't seen it, you know. I don't think I'm spoiling much because you're not a kid anymore. Um, you know, it's it's really fun to see the hero of the movie like completely you know get the balls up and punch that guy out and because he needs to take a fall and there's a hilarious scene where all the dogs take their revenge and chase the bad guys and they, they jump into this like uh this junkyard and they're behind the fence so the dogs can't get to them they're like they're like showing their and like they're mooning the dogs and like ah, ha, 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 like this and laughing at the dogs and then they realize they're actually stuck in the pound with a bunch of like vicious rottweilers that's a hilarious moment <laughs> And it's just, I'm just, I'm, I'm a sucker for, for this kind of moment where, you know, a character is really like not, not bonding with the animal in the, in the beginning. It's like, it's just annoying and it's ruining my life. And then at the end, he's, uh, you know, he's like fighting for it. And he's like, get away from my dog. Punch. Oh God. I love these moments so much. 
<laughs> it makes me so happy. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah it's just, and if you, if you have children, like I have children, like like Beethoven is a go to movie. It's just one of those movies that you stick on as an adult, and it just makes the kids genuinely happy. They love that are, shit. Are, are you a bus driver? That's what you're trying to say, right? <laughs> I I would be a bus driver if they give me my fucking license. Unfortunately, those three pedestrians I killed puts that in jeopardy. <laughs> At least oh it wasn't the dog. That's all I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I, also, yeah. I, also, I also killed one of those, but I don't really consider their lives much of, of much value, so I don't really put that on my score list. Uh, at least you didn't run over a cat. That would be on your conscience forever. I did that too. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Human Metal, being the biggest dog fan among us, what's first on your list? Uh, yeah, let's stick with with kids' movies. I mean, to be honest, you know, most most... Movies that heavily oh. feature dogs in a main role are kids' movies, I guess. Last Tango in Paris. Sure. Uh, that that, that, that does, does feature a couple of bitches. I hope you don't show that movie to your kids. Um, anyway. Of course I do. What are you talking yeah, about? Perfect naturally. Family. Anyway, my first pick is... and I've watched all the movies I picked. I watched as a kid, which is... Good, good considering the oh, my, no. co- considering the last pick, but we'll get to that. Uh, but the first movie I picked was, uh, is um, Homeward Bound, which is a story about uh, two dogs and a cat who uh, you know get dropped off by their uh, by their owners um, on a farm because their owners can't keep them anymore because they're moving to a different state and everything, and the kids are very you know upset and they don't want to see the dogs uh, the the animals go. Uh, but, you know, the parents convinced them it has to be done. And the animals are not fine with that. Uh, and the oldest dog, Shadow, is like convincing the other two, hey, something is not right. Uh, our ca- family would come back to us usually. They always do. So something is not right. Let's fucking go and find them. <laughs> and, of course, they break out from the farm and travel over the fucking country, uh, uh, mountainside of America, which is, you know, littered with challenges and, you know, dangerous animals like bears, for example. And and jaguar uh, jaguars um, uh, and pumas and they have to you know n- survive that shit and it's just a fun adventure movie with you know the animals being uh, the main feature and uh, they are um, voiced uh, by uh, by movie stars of course one is Michael J Fox one is Sally Fields uh, who is voicing the cat uh, sassy and it's just you know it's fun those you know the c- way the characters the the do- two dogs and the cats are written is very fun they have fun banter between each other there are a lot of you know dog hates cats jokes and you know and otherwise around and it's 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 just it's just a big fun time i i watched that movie in a, a cinema as a kid and uh, had a blast and it was one of my favorite movies for a long time as a kid I enjoyed it. There's a f- final scene at the moment. That's the first time I cried in the movie theater <laughs> as a child, <laughs> and uh, you know, in my life in general, because that's such an emotional scene, and the music is really manipulative and just swells up at the right moment. Uh, and yeah, that really got me. And uh, it's uh, it's fantastic. Uh, I just love that movie. It's simple. It's just good old family fun, and uh, yeah, it's it's pretty entertaining. Nothing super special hits the usual buttons but it's it's a great movie it's a great family movie yeah i i would agree with that human metal i loved homeward bound when i was a kid um i i always remember the bear part and i think there's, <laughs> there's a great callback um to homeward bound in anchorman with uh where they go into the bear pit right at the end of the film hilariously you know, oh, I I immediately regret this, and then the dog comes and saves them by talking to the bear. And w- whenever <laughs> I see that film, I am always thinking like, that's like some kind of callback to Homeward Bound. The dog coming and like talking directly to the bear in subtitles, like I knew your cousin Jimmy Chaya. Oh, I see you go in peace. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> like it's almost a direct callback to Homeward Bound, and I always appreciated that from from Anchorman. So yeah, big part of my childhood for some reason. That film lasted with me for a lot longer than other childhood films. And even when I was an adult, occasionally I found myself thinking back to Homeward Bound and really think to myself, I should find that and show that to my kids because that was such yeah, a should. powerful I think they movie. Would it. Yeah, they'd love it. I mean, it's, it's got no CG in it. I think it's pretty much timeless the way it was yep. made. So. It was yeah, just, exactly. It was... And the, cat, the, the, the animals are so, so super well trained that you, you know, you don't notice that you know they are not the characters they they pretend to be in that movie so 
yeah it's 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 really good stuff yeah it's, and, it's great uh, you know yeah let, lots of cool you know uh vistas and everything you know from the uh from the mountains and stuff so yeah it's just it's, it's a good looking very fun uh simple family holy movie. shit you know you're totally unrelated no but i just found out recently that they're remaking flight the navigator holy shit can't oh, wait sh for that i hope it doesn't suck yeah me too that was an Christmas awesome classic film. Yeah. amazing anyway Breck, uh any th any thoughts on homeward bound oh yeah i actually watched it as a kid as well i think cool, we had nice. a, we had it on videotape yeah that was uh, that was a great movie did you watch it yesterday no not yesterday <laughs> god damn it <laughs> i'm not anyway. that young i'm not that young yeah he's but a, i'm actually i'm 12. actually kind of surprised that that you watch it as a as a kid but you know considering if if you you had it on vhs probably yeah, you know. we have VHS. I think we watched it like all the time. So I've watched it like mm -hmm. a lot of times as a kid. And that movie was. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Me too. Must have seen that movie like at least 20 times. I don't I'm think I saw sure. it that much. I think I saw it like five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, th I, I really like I watched it twice in the cinema, in a the movie theater. And I think when we got it on VHS, I watched it like. For for a limited amount of time, I maybe watch it like once every two weeks or something because I loved it so much. So yeah, <laughs> Jesus Christ! Did there you, you go. see? I can I can just imagine human metal like just completely eschewing porn and just fapping to. It. <laughs> no, no, that's not why I loved it. Despite what you might think. Well, those VHS tapes do have like you know appropriate size holes, so I don't know. Maybe you did, really did love it, um, Brack. What's next on your list? Next that on my list painful. is the, the Ethan Hawke movie in a valley of violence. And uh, this is about a cowboy and his dog. And they, uh, they run into some trouble in the, in the town. And yeah, you know what happens. You know what happens. It's, it, it's actually, you know what this movie is? It's, it's, it's the Western version of John Wick. <laughs> it's, that's exactly oh. what this movie is. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and, but the difference is, the difference is in this movie... Uh, the dog stays alive for a lot longer, and you actually see that connection between Ethan Hawke and the dog uh, uh, built first before they break it down. So it's even worse. It's way it's way sadder when it actually happens, even though you know it's gonna happen. It happens like almost like uh, at the end of the first act, or maybe even a little bit later. But like in the beginning, the movie does the, the dog does tricks. The dog the dog helps him take down this like uh, this uh, this asshole priester. This asshole priest that tries to rob Ethan Hawke, and the dog like helps it <laughs> helps mm -hmm. Ethan Hawke take down the priest. And you're like, yes, this is amazing. That's a good dog right there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, but then he runs into a town run by some asshole. It's played by John Travolta and his son, who is like an even bigger asshole. <laughs> and, you're, and, and like, and of course, Ethan Hawke runs into trouble with those guys. And even he tries to leave them alone. He tries to move on, but no, they follow him and they and, and uh, try to kill him. And then they kill his dog. And you're like, okay, now it's time for revenge. And this movie is like, it's it's made like by some uh, uh, horror directors, right? Horror director. Ooh. So you show that because they this movie is real violent and you're like oh man he turns into like a like a monster from a horror movie and you're like yes kill those fucking assholes kill those assholes that killed that dog kill him and then that's what happens throughout the rest of the movies that's exactly what happens and then it's over and you're like yes that was good well it's in the title i mean <laughs> i told you the entire movie but it's great i can recommend it sounds cool i mean cool. not the dog dying part but you know him turning into a fucking revenge monster <laughs> I, I like but in, in modern movies in the movies from the last five years like something uh, it's the, not not small but something like a dog dying is like enough that's like that's all the motivation we need you know yeah <laughs> like, to kill to kill <laughs> hundreds of our fellow men yeah it's like you know? it's enough to like for us to like okay yeah that, that that's fair you know but this friend yeah. is gonna go good. They deserve it. Like I, I <laughs> hope that in the future it's gonna go even less. Like first it was like, oh, the wife they killed his uh, his daughter, or they they kidnapped his daughter, or they killed his wife, uh, and now it's like, oh, they killed his dog, oh, they they killed his cat, oh, they they they, they kidnapped this hamster, they took his sandwich <laughs> from the fridge. Like that's like, it's gonna get like it's gonna go 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 lower and lower. So it's like just like. Uh, 
It's basically nothing. Well, John Wick <laughs> 3 is coming, so yeah. that might John, still happen. I mean, like, in John maybe, Wick. maybe. I think, I think in John Wick 3, it's going to be someone played Knock Door Run on him. Uh, but I mean, John <laughs> yeah. Wick, he kills some people that are like completely not part of the Dark Killing part. You know what I mean? They killed like yes. just some Russian like bodyguards. And like, oh, well, they get in his way. I know, oh, so. Jesus Christ. I, I saw John Wick 2 just recently. I should have mentioned that in the shallows. It was fucking awesome. John Wick 2 was awesome. Of course it was. <laughs> Jesus. Anyway. Yeah. On. Great two movies. But yeah, yeah. Uh, John Wick is great. In the Fellow of Violence is worth watching as well. So uh, yeah, I recommend it. Cool. All right. Yes. So I, I, I'm going to go next with, with, with my next pick or picks in plural so we all love dogs right dogs are cute they're gorgeous they're they're you know man's best friend or whatever you know they're 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 such wonderful animals aren't they aren't they aren't they no they yap and they poop on your yard and when you're walking across somewhere they they make that kind of lurching motion for you they're like they're going to attack you you walk past someone's fence arr, arr, arr. oh shit jesus christ what's that it's a fucking dog coming out to bark at you to scare you don't you wish you could take revenge on those fuckers sometimes if anybody hasn't thought like i'd like to kick that dog in the fucking teeth like i don't think you're thinking straight like dogs are really annoying animals that's that's i'm a cat person just flat out saying I'm a cat person. <laughs> In Homeward Bound, I wish the cat had just murdered the others. Um, anyway, so I'm going to talk about dog violence. Okay, people who get the best of dogs, <laughs> like turning the tables. We have many movies on this list where the dogs are the heroes, the dogs win against everybody. Hey, how about humans, right? We're all part of the human race. How about the moment where we just assert our dominance and just no, say... No, I wish I wouldn't be. <laughs> you know what you fucking you stupid dog take some of this and i'm not talking about hot dogs although i do like to bite on those um so no. i'm going to talk about three movies with hilarious dog scenes in them um not not always hilarious or, or dog scenes that are either hilarious or have some kind of violence towards dogs so if you're an animal lover human metal please put your fingers in your ears <laughs> so my first one which is hilarious. Okay, I'm going to listen to all of it and hold you accountable afterwards. So. Right. So, so the first one is Ferris Bueller's Day Off has one of the most classic dog scenes in the history of cinema. The principal goes to Ferris Bueller's house and f after a hilarious slapstick routine of like getting his shoes stuck in the mud, accidentally turning the sprinkler on on himself, finally he finds that there's a cat flap in Ferris Bueller's house. And, oh, what happens if I go into this cat flap? I can get inside Ferris Bueller's house and prove that he's not sick, not staying home from school, and therefore I can expel him, etc. So he climbs in the cat flap and then that's trespassing, face to face. Way. Yeah, it is that's trespassing. A, that, that's, a, that's a crime. It is a crime. <laughs> it is a flat out. And he pays for it because when he goes through the cat flap, he face to face with Ferris Bueller's like snarling, drooling like Rockweiler. Um, yeah, so hence the dog you know, obviously attacks him in this hilarious moment where the, the principal tries to placate the dog by going <laughs> and like making smiley faces at the dog which, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is hilarious in itself. But then the dog attacks him and like ends up like taking his shoe, <laughs> taking the principal's shoe off and like savaging his leg and ripping all of his pants and stuff but the, the, the principal escapes anyway later uh finally i think the principal finally in the moment of of dog smashing that i'm going to come across the dog upping he like attracts the dog to the gate the dog's waiting for him and then he drops a flower pot on his head <laughs> and knocks his stone gold out <laughs> Which just is an absolute hilarious piece of dog violence. And um, especially the principal saying, Good night, you little fucker. <laughs> like, uh, it's just, it's absolutely perfect. Uh, a proper, a, a perfect it's moment of dog violence. Yeah, it's pretty harmless, the dog. But it's also made more funnier with the dog literally has that <laughs> and the snoozing sound as he's walking off. <laughs> Um, just a great moment of comic dog, uh, human on dog violence. Another fantastic moment 
of human on dog violence, which is just probably the funniest piece of dog violence in the history of cinema. It comes from one of Humor and the Metals and I's uh, guilty pleasures, Hudson Hawk. Mm-hmm. So Hudson Hawk, the main bad guys, Richard E. Grant and Sandra Bernhardt, who are amazing in that movie, by the way. Man, they are fucking fantastic bad guys. Yeah, great. Yeah, amazing. Eureka, motherfucker! They have this... They have this, uh, like, Airedale dog. See? I know enough about dogs to know that's an Airedale. It's weird. But <laughs> it's... Uh, that dog's, like, super energetic and is always wanting to somehow get up and and get a sniff or bite of Bruce Willis's balls. Which... <laughs> Which is like a f- kind of funny running joke in that film. It's like it's always trying to get up in Bruce Willis's crutch, um, and they have the they, the bad guys always have that dog. But finally, when the final conflict happens, um, and I should say to, to preface this, the the bad guys always say "bunny ball ball," and they always throw the ball to the dog when the dog is doing something appropriate. Usually trying to get hold of Bruce Willis's balls. So, in in the final moment. Um, in the climactic scene where Bruce Willis is fighting and killing all the bad guys, whatever, he's just been through a brutal fight with the amazing butler guy with the twin knives, which is just fucking <laughs> great. He finally comes face to face with their enemy dog, who then attacks like the heroine from the movie, Andy McDowell, and anyone who doesn't want to see Andy McDowell savaged by a dog, um, yeah, should go to hell because Andy <laughs> McDowell should be savaged, savaged by a dog like every day of her life. Um, but yeah, anyway, Bruce Willis's reaction to that. How do you defeat this savage Airedale? Well, there's a tennis ball launcher. Bunny, ball, ball. <laughs> he launches a tennis ball. The dog jumps up to get his tennis ball, flies out the castle window, <laughs> out the side of a cliff. <laughs> bye bye, bunny. <laughs> it is probably the funniest piece of uh, uh, dog violence ever put to cinema, I think. It's, it's an absolutely amazing moment. And just like that whole movie is just fantastic. But finally, that's yeah, yep. that's yeah. I, I have to agree too because I laughed at that scene too, and I like dogs. So make of that what you will. Also, it's one of those rare examples. Breck and I were talking about this earlier, where uh, when cats die in movies, it's so often placed for laughs, and with dogs, it's always sad. And this is one of those rare examples where you know the dog <laughs> dying is really played for laughs and is shown in a comedic way. So there you go. <laughs> Definitely. <clears throat> okay, dog deaths that are not shown in comedic light. Okay, so they're going to be a weird one. But Batman. Apparently, Batman loves killing dogs. He loves it. So the Dark Knight, Christopher Nolan's epic uh, uh, second installment of, the, of his Batman trilogy. Did you know, like, Batman kills around about four dogs in that film? So he doesn't kill humans. That's the line he will not cross. Apparently, he's willing to cross it multiple times for dogs, however. He don't give a fuck about them. <laughs> In fact, so much so that I think he just rolls around his Batmobile looking for dogs at night. Like, oh, there's one. I mean, he's, he's got to get that psychopathic urge out somehow. But if you're keeping tally, right, at the beginning of the movie, um, Batman interrupts the Scarecrow's drug meat, right? My dogs are hungry! And then uh, they they attack Batman um, during that scene. So, and Batman's got a very specific, specific MO of dog murder as well, because he murders all the dogs in the same way. So, <laughs> he's a sick fuck. He just loves the same, the same way of killing dogs, which is throwing them off something high. <laughs> so, at first, in the beginning of the movie, it's the parking structure. Right, the dogs attack Batman. He literally throws them over the side of the, like the parking ramp, so they plummet down to their deaths. <laughs> like that's two dogs gone. And then finally, at the end of the movie, he's in like a, a, a high rise that's under construction. Joker's dogs attack him again. Woof! They're, they're thrown off the side of a building that's under construction. <laughs> I mean, look out! If Batman's fighting in like a building or somewhere up high, look out below because it's going to be raining dogs. It's raining dogs! <laughs> Hallelujah! It's raining dogs! <laughs> so there you yeah. go. That that kind of wraps that's, up. That's that's not my Batman. <laughs> like, <laughs> I I appreciate the version of Batman that uh, when he get, becomes a decrepit old man, 
he takes on a dog to help him uh, out. Ace the Bat Hound, right? Him. It, Ace the Bat Hound in, in Batman Beyond is a fantastic addition to the Bat family. And I always love that he, ha, ha, you know, their origin story and how they, you know, became buddies and everything and how he got added to the uh, Wayne Mansion and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. Ace is a great character and I'm happy that Batman didn't kill him. So uh, yeah, it would have made Batman Beyond uh, uh, not not as good of a series. Yeah, just just don't tell just don't tell Bathound about Batman's early days. Sorry, I haven't. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> would be it's really like, bad. It will do against good against guns and knives. How will it do against dogs? Batman literally <laughs> inquires at one point. <laughs> okay. Yeah. He wants to know. It's important. <laughs> so uh, we're going to come on to the next one. Metal, no, Brack, sorry. What's what's final on your list? No, it's me. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. I'm getting confused. <laughs> yes, All this confused. stuff has gone to my head. You're getting drunk. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, my, my next pick um, is uh, also a movie, as I saw mostly as a kid, but yeah, many times. Uh, and that is K9. A rather a low-key body cop movie only you know it's one of the protagonists is uh james belushi as you know uh, a renegade cop kind of in a funny way who you know, doesn't really stick with the rules the first thing he does is like there's a hostage situation and he just you know takes a car from a taxi driver i think no no he buy, buys a car at the limousine store and it's like oh yeah i'm gonna uh, have all the insurances sure give me and then he just drives that fucking car straight into the uh into the uh fucking uh, house where the hostage situation is in <laughs> and takes out the hostage taker uh great stuff but yeah he he needs uh, uh a police dog for a case to to find drugs and so he come ask one of his friends uh, or colleagues who's played by Ed O'Neill of all people um to to like give him a police dog even though he isn't really good with dogs or anything but he just needs him for the job and he comes across jerry lee who's like this weirdly intelligent but very grumpy old dog who just the only thing he loves to eat is chili i think and it's like it's like the dog version of garfield or something i don't know uh, but yeah. Dog. <laughs> yeah german ship uh yeah exactly uh and um yeah, and they uh, they don't get uh, along well with each other. I mean, Mike's uh, Mike Dooley's, uh, which is the character name for him, uh, is a girlfriend like takes to the dog immediately and and loves him, but uh, Mike doesn't. And you know they have real trouble getting along. There's like this great scene where uh, uh, Jerry Lee doesn't want to get you know uh, washed uh, <laughs> because you know he stinks like a motherfucker and. Uh, yeah, uh, Mike Dooley just puts him in his uh, car, in his convertible, and just sends him straight into the car wash. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great scene. It's like a, th that that movie is on the surface level is kind of a it's a comedy, but there's also like the de underlying detective uh, you know story part, and it's weirdly violent at at points. Like really, there are like these weird spikes of super violent scenes uh that that remind you like no this is actually kind of a of a cop comedy thriller thing weirdly enough like <laughs> it's 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 really weird it's it's tone deaf in certain ways but you know most of the stuff is a comedy uh comedic relationship between Jerry Lee and Mike Dooley and yeah it's it's just in a very enjoyable movie uh the sequel's not so much but the first one I really liked as a kid and uh I've watched it many many times over I think the dynamic between uh, the cot, uh, the the cot, <laughs> the dog and the cop. Uh, uh, the dog is not talking this time around, but you know, it's it's fun. It's it's a fun movie. Well, I I, I would love to see a cop slash cod movie. That would be amazing. <laughs> how, how how would that work? Um, I also loved K nine when I was a kid too. However, like in Hollywood, it's like you know, you wait for ages for one type of movie, then three come along at the same time hence you get like uh armageddon and deep impact etc yeah um uh you know dante's dante's peak and uh, volcano and in this case it was canine and turner and hooch i love turner and hooch turner I mean, and hooch is the better movie arguably yeah i loved I, that was that was my canine for me i mean i loved canine too it was a great movie but i preferred turner and hooch i just loved uh that that 
movie. It was, it, but it was the same thing, right? It's exactly the same thing. K nine was mostly about you know like the relationship between the man and the dog, but interrupted by shockingly violent, you know, kind of like police detective shootout scenes. Turner and Hooch was exactly the same way. It was like yeah. exactly. It was like uh, mostly about the guy dealing with the 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 aspect of you know being completely neat and orderly and having a dog interrupt his life and then also interrupted by massive shootouts and like people I remember so doesn't some guy get killed by a circular saw in Turner Hooch I think it does <laughs> like <laughs> like might be some gets thrown off a building and the the main bad guy spoilers uh, for a super old movie but the main ga- bad guy like runs away from Mike Dooley after shooting Jerry Lee and of course this one again one of those great revenge moments. Like, like James Belushi just kneels uh, at his dog's side and gets like super angry, pulls out his gun, shoots at the fucker. But for some reason, which I never understood and was never really explained, the helicopter was supposed to pick up the bad guy, you know, from the drug cartel, also starts shooting at the bad guy. And he just gets nailed from both sides for some reason. What? I never understood that. But it's... <laughs> It's super dumb. Maybe, maybe they wanted just to get rid of him so he couldn't be a witness or, or uh, you know, say something against it. I don't know. Maybe they just... There was just these weird scenes. Maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe they were just like supreme love dog. Uh, love doggers? What? I'm drunk. <laughs> dog lovers. And it was just like, hey, maybe he killed a dog. Oh, my God. Nail him. <laughs> maybe. But Jesus Christ. Yeah. But uh, yeah. But, but Turner and Hooch is also a great movie. Love uh, and that's not as violent as I remember correctly, but uh, it's also mo- f- felt a bit more low key. Like it's it's a bit more of a quiet movie than uh, still comedy, but a bit more quiet. Uh, K nine felt more hijinksy. Like it's 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 loud. It's it's more aggressive. So I guess that's that's kind of a difference. Also, I I think Jerry Lee is more of a funny, cute dog than Hooch is. Hooch is kind of gross because he's always drooling he, yeah. uh, i think uh, turner says at some point you look like you've uh, swallowed a fucking sneaker or something because he got like this these weird long threads of drool hanging on the side that look like shoelaces <laughs> it was a funny scene though but yeah uh uh yeah but both great movies how about you brack tiebreaker turner and huge or canine he hasn't watched either yeah <laughs> that's he's true got that, he's got that, <laughs> he's got that look on his face those silly, yeah. with those silly purple glasses <laughs> <laughs> all right uh brack what's next on your list uh next on my list it's, it's it's kind of kind of cheating because it's not technically a dog it's technically a wolf but it's the best wolf it's also the best zelda game and of course i'm talking about okami i guess you guys yeah. have played it no yeah and i i i would agree probably if it wasn't for I don't know, Link to the Past and, and Breath of the Wild, maybe. <laughs> but the, close. Okami is definitely up there. It's definitely in the top three, uh, if not one of uh, the contender for, for first place of Zelda, Zelda games, definitely. But, uh, yeah, it's a wolf, but it's close enough. People call you a dog. Actually, people call you... She, a... no, she, she acts like a dog many she, times. She acts like She's a like, dog. You know, and people call you a dog, and... and people call you a butt a lot. Yeah. Like, your main yeah. character, the, the, the main character's, like, a uh, helper... Calls, calls her a mutt all the time. So I think it, it, yeah. it counts as a dog. You can actually, like, uh, 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 people come up to you if you stand still and, like, don't do, do, use the controller. People come up to you and pet you as well, like you're a dog. So it, it's just a dog. It's just a dog. They call her a wolf, but it's, it's, it's just a dog. And it's also a goddess. Uh, it's a dog that's also a yeah. goddess. So it's like... It, the it's, goddess. I mean, Amaterasu is one of, I think, in... in uh, is it Shintoism? I think it's in at least in... Japan, one of Japanese religion, she's one of the oldest, highest goddesses there is of creation and everything. I think. See, and so, that's a religion yeah. I can I can live by, when when uh, when the <laughs> god is a dog. Yeah, I don't think think if she's in the actual, you know, old in in the religious text, if she's a dog. But you know, in this one, she just inhabits the dog, uh, or a wolf, and you know because. Wolves apparently don't exist in this universe. Everyone thinks it's a dog. Uh, so, An adorable, I don't know. adorable dog. Yeah, that just yeah, goes definitely. on adventures and helps everybody out. Ah, yeah, amazing. Yeah, but... Also, very fierce fighter yes. uh, and slayer of many onis and ogres. Kicks everybody's ass. Like she, she's such a strong fighter that I didn't even die once in the entire game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. if you. <laughs> 
ねねね。おかみ英語ではウーフ。あ、ね、の。いや、そう、おかみ、literally means wolf in Japanese。I know, I, don't care. I know, I'm aware of that. I don't care, it's a dog. I said it's a dog,、oh, and now it's a dog. So, shut up. Okay, it acts, it... despite the fact that the title in Japanese literally says wolf. Okay,、yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> which, is, which is also, I think, a pun because you draw stuff, and you know, kami means paper, so.、Uh, but yeah,、um, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a great game. It's fantastic. Like, I loved it from beginning to end, and、uh, the graphical style,、uh, style at this point is, of course, legendary because it looks like, you know, watercolor drawing at some point,、uh, or, or yeah, something、it's、like that. It's a canine, <laughs> for, at least. So、uh, let's keep、yeah. it at that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely.、Um, fantastic, fantastic game. And with, despite of, you know, it could be a dog, it could be a wolf, but. <laughs> but well, yeah, it's,、uh... A dog, a wolf, <laughs> and an amazing artist all at the same time. So, yeah, that's, that's, yes, that's all I'm saying. Exactly. Amazing game, amazing dog, another wolf. Go play that game. If you like your adventure games, I mean, it's now freshly been ported to the PS4. And if you for some reason have skipped out on this game until now, please, if you like your Zelda esque games, you, sh- you owe it to yourself to check out Okami. It's a, it's a fantastic game. Okami wa wolf de shio inuji nain de yo. Agaero. You will see. If, if you actually get over yourself and fucking play that game,、uh, Then、uh, you will see how much、uh, Amaterasu acts like a fucking dog instead of a wolf. All right. But yeah. Although, I, yeah, probably I'm never, seriously though, I'm never going to play that game because it's,、uh, it's a Zelda ripoff and I played enough Zelda in my youth to, to、uh, not want to play that type of game. And why would you play that when you can play Red Dead Redemption 2? Hey, hey, hey.、Uh-huh. <laughs> What, that's a, why would you play、uh, Mad Max if you could play this? Yeah. Because it's better. <laughs> I don't know. It's no. <laughs> not bad. No,、definitely、it's not. not. And、oh, I、shit. like Mad Max, but Okami is so much better than that. Oh. If that's literally. I'll have to check that out. If that is true, I, I really have to check Okami out.、Um, so I guess, I guess that's going to bring me onto my, onto my last list.、Uh, so. Excuse me, I'm rambling a bit because I've gotten a, bit, a wee bit drunk and I had assumed, but still, my favorite. You're almost done. Do you need a bit hair of the dark? Do I need a bit of heroin? No, h e r of Hair of the dog. Hair of the dog. Yes, I do need a bit of hair of the dog. Like a lot of hair of the dog. But that's my problem in general. Too much hair of the dog.、I'm, I've got. Do you know that like, feeling when you get hair stuck in the back <laughs> of your throat? I, I, I'm, I'm like, saying one thing. One of your problems is definitely not too much hair. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that's also a problem. Like, not too much hair, but too much hair of the dog. It's like there's a hair imbalance here. Maybe I should take the hair of the dog and like transplant it to my own head. And then I could have like a nice flowing mane like a lion. But that technically that's a cat. Anyway, <laughs> I'm, I'm rambling. So, my favorite dog movie is Marley and Me. Yeah. So, Jesus Christ.、Uh, I don't, I, I don't want to talk about this movie too much. A, because I'm a bit drunk and I fear if I talk too long, I'm going to ramble. And B, because it really, really messes with me. That's, that's a film that's one of those movies that's really hard for me to watch because it's so upsetting.、Uh, so, Mommy is about a.、Uh, it stars O. Wilson and、uh, I think Jennifer Aniston, I think, is the, is the female lead、yeah, in that film.、So. Wow. Who take a dog. Who buy a dog into their family, but、uh, the dog is the focus, but also sort of、um, a story device as well. So the point of the film was you see the, the, the growing up of a family, the raising of their children from, from newborn, you know, until they grow up to like teenagers or whatever.、Uh, It's seen through the eyes of the dog or through the kind of focus of the dog. So I think、uh, Owen Wilson and Jennifer Aniston, who are a couple, they get the dog when they're sort of starting their relationship or when they move in and then they have children. Their children grow up, the dog grows up with the children, and eventually, you know, the dog dies and has to be put down. But how can the dog see- die if there's a sequel? 
the I, I don't know what the sequel is, but it doesn't feature no, the no, same got, track. It's got Marley, Marley and Me, The Puppy Years. Uh, I haven't seen okay, it. Okay. Probably, it's probably but, terrible. But yes, it probably is terrible. However, the original film, it, it's, that is one of those movies I don't understand why it has a sequel. It's like The Crow. It doesn't need a sequel. It's so perfect. It's it's so perfect and does what it needs to do so perfectly that it absolutely does not need a sequel. That's why I haven't even investigated the sequels, even though I know there are sequels, because it's so perfect as a standalone film. Because, like, it's the thing is, like, the the the, the dog and the conflict with the, especially with Owen Wilson, the father, who who doesn't really want a dog, you know, much like the theme of many of these films, but then grows to love the dog. But it's also the connection that the family have with this dog as it grows up with them, that the dog also symbolizes his attachment to his children and the dog. And it's more about the family than the dog. Like it, they go through points where like the father and the mother go through relationship perils or whatever. And sometimes during those points, the, the, the companion who brings them solace or catharsis is the dog because they feel like the dog is the only person, you know, who, who sort of like understands them or, you know what I mean? The dog is like a friend who isn't affected by the other things. It's just loyal always. And then the connection and the love that they have with the children. So finally, when the dog develops like a, like a problem with his liver and has to be put down and Owen Wilson, the guy who's had so much turmoil with the dog is the one who has to actually, actually take it to the vet and get it put down it's not just putting the dog down something that he loves. It's also connected to the innocence of his children. Like that moment where innocence dies, you know what I mean? Something so beloved by his children and that moment in the vet where he's waiting to put the the, the dog down and he's thinking about all of the, the moments that the dog who has grown up with his kids, all of those moments, all of the stuff in the relationship he's had with his wife and his kids and stuff, God damn that fucks you up. God damn if you don't cry real hard during that scene there's something wrong with you. Like like it's harsh and to see Owen Wilson who's been like relatively stoic throughout the whole film just break down and he has to take by hit his dog that is a hardcore hardcore emotional moment. Like that's hard to watch and take. Like it's just it's a perfect film. I don't know why it has a sequel because like that's absolutely perfect. Like, the dog is a metaphor, or not a metaphor, but a device to show you all the struggles that a family goes through, that a relationship grows through, that that how to bring up children, the the, the struggles that you go through with your kids and stuff. It's life. It's a movie about life, anchored by a dog. It's absolutely phenomenal filmmaking and a really intensely emotional film that just if you see it and you don't cry, I think there's something wrong with you. Like it's it's fantastic. Have you guys seen Marley and Me? What do you think about that film? Nope. No, nope, I've skipped it for some reason, but uh, uh, was, uh, it sounds like I should check it out. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. Like, oh, this, this looks very emotionally manipulative. I'm not going to watch it. No, it's it it's it's fucking fantastic because I've already seen Haichi a dark still as like I've seen enough uh, sad emotionally uh, dark movies. Yeah, but that's that's I I think yeah I think you're missing the point of Molly and me. Like it's not the dog is it's no, I you'll understand point. if you see I, it. You just yeah. told me the points over exactly, like, like the last what? twenty minutes, I think. I'm there sure. you go. So what but seriously, it's really well done, though, Brack, and it's not manipulative. The thing is about Marley and Me, it feels realistic enough. It's it's like, it's like devastating, but actually, it's relatively free of smolch. That's that's what makes it great. That's what makes it better than all the other dog movies. That's what places it number one for me because that ultimately it feels real. That that family feels like a real family that have like and that's real emotional attachment there's no like unlike what human metal was saying there's no swelling music it doesn't feel like it's manipulating you it's just leaving you with that situation and you can make of it what you will like for me it's just like damn that hurts like real hard like but yeah mm. and it like it's it's i think it's quite subtle in that sense in the way it's sort of like makes itself so like just anchors itself in realism so so intensely i love it 
It's a great film. Don't want to ever see it again because it's, it's harsh. It's too harsh for me. Yeah, I don't. I, it feels like uh, just you know because of the emotional storytelling, I feel I feel like I want to watch it, but then again, I feel like this is gonna destroy me too because I had to already put down two dogs in my lifetime, and those were harrowing moments. And if the scene goes the way I imagine it to be, this will probably kill me. So I don't know. I don't know if I if I can. Maybe I'll watch it one day. We'll see. But uh, yeah, at least it sounds like they were t uh, uh, telling an emotionally gripping story. Yeah, I think so. Just yeah, watch it because it's a great film. But beware, it will it will it's not a happy film. It will fuck you up. Um. Mm -hmm. So Human Metal, what's number one on your list? Another movie that will fuck you up uh, in a different way, though. <laughs> Especially if you watch it as a kid, which I did. I don't know why. That was a bad choice. But, uh, yeah, it's Man's Best Friend. And, uh, I mean, we all love horror movies, like, uh, right? Uh, all three of us. Uh, and I think we all love monster movies. Uh, so, yeah, this is kind of a combination of both of those. Uh, because it's about uh, basically a genetically enhanced dog. I think it was a, rock, a Rottweiler, if I'm not mistaken, uh, called Max. And he's like uh, basically spliced together with from different animal DNA or, you know, got enhanced DNA and animal characteristics. But on the outside is a normal dog. And then there uh, there's this animal rights lady who's the main protagonist and she breaks into a... The, uh, the 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 test uh, center the the uh, w where he's kept among other animals and uh, she frees them and um, uh, but decides to keep Max like for herself and uh, adopt him and take him to her home, which is not the best decision for the people in her environment <laughs> because Max is uh, is not a well emotionally well balanced dog uh, you know he takes. To her immediately and decides she needs protection from everything and everything that's outside the house be it the fucking mailman who uh yeah dies <laughs> really <laughs> a really bad way and you know they take this old cliche wow all dogs want to kill the mailman no max kills the mailman he literally kills him uh because you know he thinks of him as a threat and uh yeah he basically uh he does a lot of mischievous things. If you like cats, don't watch this movie. Uh, because there is a scene where, you know, dogs chase cats, get it? But, you know, eventually the cat will go up a tree so the dog can't reach it. Ha ha ha. The problem is the cat didn't account for Max being a fucking genetically enhanced monster dog. So, of course, because he has some um, cat DNA in him or... I don't know, chameleon DNA or whatever. He got a lot of... Diff he definitely has chameleon DNA. He can also fucking use a camouflage and disguise himself. That's how he actually kills the mailman. Uh, but, <laughs> yeah, he can climb up the fucking tree, gets into the tree, and in the uncut version, you see him actually swallowing the fucking cat. <laughs> and that scene scarred me as a kid. <laughs> because that it was, at least from what I remember of it, it was really well done. Yeah, it's a stuffed cat and everything, but you see, you know, him just opening his mouth and just fucking chugging and just pulling down that cat head. And it's... <laughs> holy shit. It's... Probably if I watch it today, it's like, oh my god, this is the dumbest fucking horror movie slasher thing, weird puppetry I've ever seen. But uh, yeah, back when I watched it as a kid, that was kind of traumatizing for me. <laughs> because I also like cats. <laughs> but yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> It's great. <laughs> so yeah, uh, the, the the way the story goes, of course, is uh, I don't know if someone gets bitten uh, by Max or something. At you know the cliche, but the woman decides to give Max away, and she sends him to. Uh, she gives him makes a really bad choice and gives him to like the scrapyard owner, who turns out to be like a really sadistic piece of shit, and uh, goes to town on Max with a shovel and a blowtorch. Um, and uh, eventually Max gets the upper hand on him, uh, on him and kills him violently. And then he decides to go back to the house and, uh, yeah, destroy everything in his way, kind of. Or at least get back to his owner. Uh, uh, peace in her boyfriend's face. Problem is, Max P is made of acid, <laughs> like the xenomorph's blood. That's true. <laughs> so, yeah, that happens. <laughs> 
and eventually, you know, the uh, the guy from the test lab catches up to them and takes the lady hostage. And uh, yeah, that's when Max has to um, protect her and dies, but not without throwing the bad guy, who I believe is Lance Henriksen, yes. from, also from yes, the Alien is. movies. That's Lots cool. of overlap with Alien, but uh, throws of Lance Henriksen from from uh, through a fucking glass roof thing, and he gets electrocuted. It's a blast. It's a stupid, dumb horror movie. If you like animals, you know, and can't stand violence against animals, like I usually do, you should probably not watch that movie because it's harrowing to see what Max looks like after that scrapyard owner is done with him. He's like this has, has this nasty scar on his face. Uh, um, but yeah, it's still it's like it's it's basically a dumb slasher horror movie with the main protagonist and you know Freddy or Jason being the dog in this case. Uh, so and it I, looks like Lance yeah. Henriksen is killed by a predator. An alien and a terminator and this fucking dog yeah <laughs> yeah i i always i always remember that it's a hilarious scene where the like the cat goes up the tree and then the dog just sprouts these massive claws and just climbs up the tree yeah. and there's a hilarious scene where the cat's just in the tree like meowing when the dog eats the cat, he doesn't just eat it. He, like, gobs it down like an anaconda. It's hilarious. Yes. <laughs> it's a crazy... It's it's a really fucked up movie. Like, it's... it's I don't know. I still have it on DVD. I think I have not unwrapped it. I bought it on some DVD, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, convention. Because I, I remember that movie. I haven't dared to watch it again. Maybe I should. I think I find it completely hilarious today. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it also has this weird ending. He, for some reason, like they they have this the neighbor has a dog or or something like that, like this this uh, collie, and Max is really after her. And then there's this weird scene where where the dog tries to escape from from Max because he's kind of rapey, and then <laughs> she just jumps on a on on one of the beds and. And you see like Max walking into the bedroom and then you see a cut of the of the house from the outside and you just hear the uh, the collie like uh, howl. And it's like, did he just did he just rape that fucking collie? <laughs> what the fuck happened here? Oh, and of man. course at the end Max dies, but you know, that collie gives birth to cute collie puppies and one really mean looking little black Max lookalike and <laughs> this is a sequel <laughs> setup. Man's best friend, the puppy years. Uh, anyway, it's just it's just a fucking crazy dumb movie. And if you like horror movies, if you like crazy dumb horror movie shit, maybe you should should, should give this one a chance. It's yeah, it's full of, uh, that, of crazy dumb shit. That, that reminds me of one of the funniest things I ever saw. Just I'll, I'll finish up with an anecdote of something really hilarious I saw in my hometown back in England where. My brother and I were walking to like the corner shop or something, and then there was a lady with a like a a very nice prim like you know like toy poodle, and then a, a guy like a, a kind of chav guy like you know in a baseball cap whatever came along with his pug dog, and then that pug dog just ran over to the toy poodle and immediately tried to start having sex with it, and mm. the the toy poodle which is you know a usual thing when you see when you you know when when you with dogs and stuff however what happened next was crazy the toy poodle was so distressed by this it slipped its collar somehow and just took off like a rocket the pug (laughs) it's it's zeal for the toy poodle pulled itself out of its own hand and also just went caning off after the toy poodle (laughs) with its knee just flapping in the wind behind it (laughs) <laughs> my brother and I were just watching these two dogs just showed off and their owners basically panic and go running after and just like what happened unfortunately I didn't get to find out what happened but it was seriously one of the funniest kinda, dog things I ever saw I think the funniest thing is that you know one of the dogs was a puck and I can't imagine him doing anything fast and running <laughs> after that other dog fast it did though. pucks are not really made for that <laughs> it did take off like a rocket man he wanted to fuck something real bad uh, God damn! And what we learn from that, dogs are fun. Yes, they are fun. That's, unless they're biting <laughs> in one way or another, unless they're biting you or barking at you, um, then they cat. have bad owners. Uh, I, I I prefer cats. Um, I, cats don't bark or bite at you. Um, yeah, they, they can scratch you though. They can. Don't they bite. Of course they bite. 
Uh, yeah, occasionally they bite. Yeah, but uh, they don't. They don't like. However, if you're walking past someone's garden, they don't suddenly charge at you and start barking at you like they're gonna murder you. Neither do dogs if they're well trained, but some dogs are not. Yeah, most dogs. So it's all. It always comes down to the owners <laughs> every time. Every time. It's never a dog that, you know, it's just a bad dog starting from, you know, from birth. It's always a shitty owner who doesn't know how to handle a dog. And there is like 90% on you know what? people who you own know, a dog you know don't what? know how to you handle know what? I like cats better, but uh, I've never seen a cat do, ba do uh, basketball. So uh, I, th I think dogs <laughs> yeah, win. True. I don't maybe so, but... Yeah, actually, in my hometown, I see human metal. There's like, the, I go past this garden, and there's these two like bulldogs that always come and run up to the fence and bark at me, scare me shitless. However, I go past this other mm -hmm. house, there's these two sheepdog, mm -hmm. and they're always like beautiful. I always stop to, to like pet them and stuff. So, yeah, maybe it is, you yeah. know, who knows. And with that, we've come to the end of this week's visit to the ocean floor. Uh, if you have any uh, opinions on dogs, especially good hot dogs, because goddamn. We all need a good hot dog from time to time. Please sound off in the comment section. Uh, and please join us next time. You're having a real bad dog day afternoon.